classifying matter. All matter is made up of different types or combinations of particles. Different types and combinations of particles give every type of matter a particular characteristic or a property. So however way that that mat bit of matter is made up of, will be consistent within that piece of matter. So we look at something like salt. And salt, formula for table salt, NaCl. And we know that we're going to have an atom of sodium and an atom of chlorine. But then we'll have something like water, H2O. Both have different components to each, its, its particle. So each bit of matter is completely different from one another. But throughout the salt, is NaCl. Throughout the liquid water, or the ice cube, is H2O. So it's consistent throughout, but they're completely different from one another. And because they're different, they exhibit different properties. So a property is a characteristic that describes a substance. Substances may be classified as pure substances, or mixtures depending on how their particles are arranged. So we can have the pure substance of salt, as we just described, NaCl, right? That's a pure substance. We can have the water, that's also a pure substance. Put these two together, okay, dissolve salt into water, and we have a mixture of some sort. So let's look at pure substances. A pure substance is made up of only one kind of matter and has a unique set of properties. Okay, so it's got a unique set of colors, hardness, boiling point, melting point that is consistent for that bit of matter. We know that for water, it has a melting point that is at zero degrees. The minute you add something else to it, it's no longer a pure substance. So we add anything to water, we know this water will freeze at zero degrees, we know this water will boil at, at 100 degrees Celsius. The minute we add something, we change the mixture, we change the property of this, this mixture. And so now, all these characteristics can actually change with it. So, pure substance is either an element or a compound, and we're going to look at the difference between an element and a compound. So, here's an example. Carbon is an element. Elements are found on the periodic table. So if we look at every letter, all the letters that make up the periodic table, each one is considered an element. We put a whole bunch of them together, we form something called a compound. And here is sugar as uh, one of the examples that I'm using, is considered a compound. Sugar is made up of three elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So C6, H12, O6 is an example of one type of sugar, which is glucose. And we know it's made up of one, two, three elements, but put them all together, we form one compound. And we're still continuing with this. This one compound is considered a pure substance because it is consistent throughout. Every single particle of the matter of sugar, okay, every bit of matter that makes up sugar or makes up glucose, is made up of this same exact composition. An element is a substance that cannot be broken down into any simpler substances by chemical means. Each element has its own name, and its own symbol. So, we looked at the example just before, and we said carbon, right? So carbon, oops, carbon, and the symbol for carbon, if you look at the periodic table, is C. So to find out the symbol, okay, of each element, just look at the periodic table. Okay. We have carbon, we have things like hydrogen, and hydrogen is the letter H. We have something like chlorine, which is Cl. We have something like helium, which is HE. Okay? These are all examples of elements. A compound is a pure substance that is made from two or more elements that are combined together chemically. So chemically, we've put together two elements, H2O, right? hydrogen, 
oxygen. Those are the two elements. But in total, we put them together and we form a compound called H2O, our water molecule. So here, as we said, water is an example, as we said, containing hydrogen and oxygen. 